true that if you make too much money, Social Security will take back some of your benefits? Well, here to talk with me about this is Dana Anspaugh from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Hi, Bob. Thanks. Great to be here. Great to have you here. Um, so the answer to the question, is it true? Well, unfortunately, it is true. It depends on your age. Uh, they can, they meaning Social Security, can partially or completely stop your benefits, depending on three things. One, if you are receiving benefits, obviously you have to have some kind of benefit you're receiving for them to, to stop or reduce it. Two, if you have earned income, meaning you went to work and earned income in excess of a set of limits. And three, if you are not yet what is called your full retirement age. And full retirement age is an age set by the Social Security Administration. It is dependent on your year of birth and it varies. So for those who are reaching the age of 62 in 2022, more specifically born January 2nd, 1960 or later, full retirement age is age 67. But for those born between January 2nd, 1955 and January 1st, 1960, full retirement age can be 66 in some odd number of months. So the actual number of months depends on your year of birth. You actually have to go and, and look this up. So it's complicated because if you are not yet full retirement age, whatever that is based on your year of birth, and you have, have started benefits, then yes, you could be subject to the earnings limit and your benefits could be reduced or completely stopped for a bit. Mm. So you mentioned reducing or being stopped. What determines the actual amount of the reduction? So the amount of the reduction depends on what phase you are in. So I like to break it into to three phases. The good news is once you have reached your full retirement age, there is no reduction. You don't have to worry about the earnings limit. You could earn an unlimited amount of money and collect your benefits. But the other two phases apply uh, one for the years, any full calendar year prior to the year that you reach your full retirement age. So we'll call that phase one. And then the second phase would be the year that you attain your full retirement age. So let me walk you through those, those two sets of rules. So for the years prior to you reaching full retirement age, full calendar year, not the year you turn full retirement age, there is an earnings limit of 19,560 in 2022 or 1,630 per month. So during this phase, you're not yet your full retirement age for the entire year, but you have started Social Security, they can take back $1 for every $2 that you earn in excess of the limit. So using really simple numbers, let's say you earn $40,000 and you know the, the earnings limit's 19560 Essentially, they're taking back a dollar for every $2 you earned over that limit. So it can be a pretty big number that, that they're taking back. Um, if you only worked half the year, there is a special rule that, that applies. So let's say you had a, a full-time job and you retire partway through the year and you earned you know, $50,000 in that first half of the year. Well, you're over the earnings limit. Does it apply? Well, if you retire completely, no. But then if you pick back up part-time work later in the year, that's when that monthly limit kicks in, that 1,630. So you pick back up part-time work, but you earn in excess of that 1,630 per month. The, the earnings limit would would kick back in. All of that was phase one. <laughs> phase two? <laughs> yes, phase two. So the year you attain your full retirement age, they're a little more lenient. So that year you can earn 51,960. That's the 2022 limit. These limits are indexed with inflation. So they go up a little bit each year. And during that year, uh, for every dollar you earn in excess of the earnings limit, they can take back $3. And so for every dollar in benefits you earn, you know, Social Security can say, great, we're going to take, take back three if, if it's in excess of the limit. And during this year, the limit only applies to the earnings you would earn before you reach your full retirement age. So once again, you hit your full retirement age, let's say on February, uh, only the earnings you earned in January would, would count during that calendar year. After you reach full retirement age, you can earn an unlimited amount and collect your full benefits. So let me go back to phases one and two. There's a misconception that you lose those benefits forever, but that's not quite true. That is, is accurate. Some 
you know, when we say they can partially reduce or stop your benefits, what happens is they recalculate, they take the amount that would have been paid to you. And there's a recalculation that happens once you reach your full retirement age. When you do the math, it's approximately a 13 year, you know, 12 to 13 year break even. So it's not that you lose those benefits forever. You do get them back later, but over a, a much longer period of time. All right. Uh, you mentioned earnings. What, what's defined as earnings? Yeah, that's a really good question. So it's earned income, the type of income that you pay payroll taxes or self-employment or what we call FICA taxes, your, your social security withholding taxes. Uh, investment income does not count. Pension income, you know, disability payments that you might receive. So none of that counts toward the earnings limit. IRA withdrawals don't count. You could take money out of your IRA, out of a Roth IRA, out of a mutual fund. You could have interest income from a CD or annuity. None of that counts toward this earnings limit. It's actually earnings that, that you work for and, and pay into payroll taxes. Now, one question that comes up is some types of deferred comp plans. Uh, you, you earned the money years prior. Now you get paid this deferred compensation benefit, but they do withhold payroll taxes on it. And that's considered, it's called a special payment under the system, and it won't count against the earnings limit. So because it was for work performed in prior years. Hmm. And does the earnings limit apply to widows, widowers, divorced spouses, et cetera? It does. And so if you're receiving a spousal social security benefit, if unfortunately your spouse passed away and, and you're receiving a widow or widower benefit, yes, it does apply and there is a slightly different full retirement age. So for widows or widowers, full retirement age is 66. You can actually collect a widow benefit as early as age 60. So let's say you collected a benefit starting at 61 or 62, but a few years later you went back to, to take on a part-time job. Yes, the earnings limit could apply to you if you are a widow or widower. And once you reach 66, it would no longer apply. Hmm. So should people consider all this when they're thinking about their retirement date? Well, of course. <laughs> so people should consider all kinds of things, but it's, it's hard. The rules are complicated. It's definitely a, a factor that comes up when we do our planning. And I'll walk you through an example that we encountered just this past year. So it's a client, I'll call her Karen, and she is going to retire in June of this year, June of 2022. She's currently age 65. Her full retirement age is next year in 2023 in May. And Karen is earning about $90,000 a year. So as soon as she retires, uh, Karen can actually collect a widow benefit based on, on a deceased ex-spouse. So unfortunately, her spouse passed away many years ago. And so what Karen wants to do is retire in June of this year, and then her company actually wants to hire her back as a consultant to help with a, an annual event that they do in the fall of each year. Well, in 2022, according to the earnings limit, Karen could earn up to $19,560 and, col and collect her full Social Security benefits. But clearly, she's going to earn more than that in the first half of the year. If she's just going to retire and be done in June, that wouldn't be a problem. But if she does go back to work as a consultant, that monthly earnings limit of $16.30 per month will kick in, and it would trigger the earnings limit. So the likely outcome is Karen would go back and take on this consulting job, and during those months where she had this consulting income, her Social Security benefits would be reduced or completely eliminated. And sometimes this catches up with you after the fact. So, you know, Social Security will see that you paid into payroll taxes or see your tax return and they can come back when they catch up to you three or four months later and say, hey, you weren't really have supposed to have received those benefits. So we're going to pause your benefits now until you've quote paid back what, what we overpaid you during those months. Mm -hmm. So Karen can talk to her employer, you know, maybe she's going to work through the end of the year. Um, you know, maybe she can work something out with her employer. Uh, but yes, it is something that she should take into account. Mm. Anything else people need to know? I think the other thing I encounter is people confuse the earnings limit with the taxation of Social Security. Those are two separate set of rules. So when you receive any type of Social Security payment, up to 85% of it can be subject to taxation. 
And if you look at your tax return, there's a there's two boxes where you input Social Security. There's the gross amount, and then there's a separate box, which is the taxable amount. So not all of the Social Security you receive will be taxable, but there's a formula that determines how much. And that formula depends on the ratio of your Social Security income to your other income. So sometimes I see people confuse these two rules. The earnings limit applies if you have earned income and collect benefits before real before full retirement age. Taxation, unfortunately, applies for our whole life. <laughs> the benefits could be taxed no matter what. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Dana, as, as always, I think we cover a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that uh, bears reemphasizing? I don't know if we missed anything. I mean, obviously the rules are complicated, so it pays to do your homework and make sure you've thought through everything before you start your benefits. Thank you.